Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, I'm coming to you from Colorado, and we're gonna be taking Hasselblad lenses and putting them on the Fuji GFX system. If you enjoy the content I provide on this channel and you want to get into more in-depth discussions, I recommend you check out my newly launched F11 Photography Podcast on all major platforms, including Apple and Spotify. Simply click on the link to your favorite host in the description below. And now on with the episode. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. So I'm coming to you from Colorado. If you don't believe me, I went to a gift shop and bought a Colorado hat. So if this majestic backdrop of uh, Pikes Peak, which is actually covered by a uh, low-lying fog at the moment, doesn't convince you, maybe my hat will. I also want to apologize. I have a little bit of pillow face. It's about six in the morning, uh, but I wanted to wake up and talk to you about a really cool thing I'm working on. I want to thank uh, Photo Deox, by the way, uh, because they did provide the adapters for today's episode. But like all of my reviews, my uh, opinions are going to be my own and it's going to be completely independent. I always love to be transparent. So you may ask yourself, why would you take a Hasselblad V-mount lens and put it on a Fuji GFX? Well, the short answer is because you can, uh, but there's a more complex answer to that. First of all, these are fantastic lenses uh, made in West Germany back before they uh, unified together as one Germany during the Cold War. These Zeiss lenses produce amazing results. And so why not take these beautiful lenses and put them on a beautiful sensor? That is the number one reason but another reason to keep in mind is that for a lot of people, those uh, GFX lenses, while they're amazing, and I own a few myself, they all, for the most part, have commas in the price tags. You can get Hasselblad lenses for three, $400 for the V-mount system that produce amazing results. And as a portrait photographer who leans a little bit more toward the editorial side of things, I do love artsy looks. And I've found that uh, adapting vintage lenses to the Fuji GFX produces some very interesting and beautiful results. Uh, you can check out my uh, beginner's guide to adapting vintage lenses to the Fuji GFX in the link in the description below. The one you see right here is just your standard V-mount to Fuji GFX. They're also letting me check out their ND throttle variable neutral density filter adapter, in addition to the tilt rocker adapter for V-mounts to GFX. I'm gonna put these through the paces here in Colorado. I'm also gonna take them uh, on the streets of Austin back home. But without further ado, let's get to the review right now. A quick disclaimer so you don't get mad at Photo Deox, you actually have to change some settings in your camera. You need to go to button dial setting, you need to go to shoot without lens and make sure that's on, otherwise your camera's not going to fire. Now let's check out the first adapter. So here's the basic adapter. It's just a Hasselblad, the GFX. Uh, it's just machined perfectly for the Hasselblad lenses to fit on. There's nothing super fancy about it, nor should there be. It just simply adapts your Hasselblad to GFX. And of course, if you're watching this, uh, your shutter speed is controlled inside your camera and you can still use the little uh, switches and levers on your uh, Hasselblad to control your aperture. So that's really the way you use this. Uh, it does come with a cool uh, uh, collar if you want to put it on a tripod here as opposed to putting it on a tripod here. Uh, but for the money, this gets the job done. Uh, check out some images I took with just this adapter and uh, let me know what you think in the comments.
I hope you like those shots. Uh, as you can see here in Capture One, it says F1. That's because it doesn't know what f-stop it was at. There's no XF data, there's no terminals. However, you can still see your ISO and your shutter speed readouts show up. So that's pretty cool. But I just wanna make sure you keep that in mind. These are 50 year old lenses being put onto a modern GFX camera. So they're not going to communicate. I don't really have any cons to give you about this adapter. Maybe they could have given you a, like a velvety type pouch to put it in. But beyond that, I really don't have anything negative to say about it. It simply does its job. Now let's dive into the ND throttle and we'll talk about attaching and detaching the lenses from the adapters. And of course, how do you fit it? You just take the orange dots, you align them just like any other lens and you're good to go. Uh, to take it off, there's this little uh, release right here. Turn it counterclockwise, it comes right off. There's not a lot to talk about with this lens adapter, uh, but it's very well constructed. The machining is good. I don't have any grinding between the metal, which is of course what we're looking for. Uh, so got to give it uh, props across the board. It produces fantastic results. It doesn't uh, produce any weird color casts on my images. Uh, so that's, that's a win. Um, the only thing that I think could be improved upon is it didn't ship with anything to cover up this front uh, ND filter. And so the only way I can really transport it is in the box it came in or with a lens attached. Uh, it'd be cool if there's some sort of a front cap included with it because I'm afraid I'm going to scratch uh, this front element of the ND filter. But besides that, I really can't think of anything uh, negative. So there are two instances in which I really think that the ND throttle shines for Hasselblad. Uh, maybe you're shooting video with it. So I do it for fun, but it's probably not the primary reason why I would buy this. The perfect scenario where I would use this adapter is if I were shooting wide open at like say 2.8 and I wanted to slow my shutter speed down to like 1 1 25th, like you see here, it'll actually pull it off without blowing out highlights. Otherwise you have to be at like 1 4,000th of a second or something like that in the middle of the day. And then the other person uh, is the landscape photographer who wants to shoot the long exposure. And when I had this thing uh, at the full eight stops, in the middle of the day, even 30 seconds wasn't long enough. So you can get really long exposures uh, with this ND filter, especially if you're shooting at dusk. And so uh, th that's who I would recommend this for. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. If you do want to adapt your Hasselblad uh, to your Fuji GFX, this worked flawlessly. Now let's talk about our final adapter, the Tilt Rocker, which you will accidentally hear me refer to sometimes as a lens instead of an adapter because I hadn't had my coffee yet. Okay, so let's talk about the Tilt Rocker. The Tilt Rocker is pretty cool. So one thing to keep in mind about Hasselblad lenses is that they actually appear a little longer when you put them onto your GFX due to crop factor. So uh, something like the 80 millimeter, uh, when you convert that to full frame, it's kind of in that 45 to 50 millimeter range, maybe 55, somewhere in there. I don't remember the math off the top of my head, but it's kind of a normal field of view, the 82.8. When you put the 82.8s onto the Fuji GFX, it's a little longer. So if a normal field of view on a full frame is like 50 millimeter, it might present kind of from the perspective of somewhere in the 60s. So it's a little tighter of a shot. And if you're shooting something like landscapes, that could be an issue. And one of the cool things about the tilt rocker is, oh, my lens isn't wide enough, that's okay. You can just push this down, it expands, you take your shot, you move it on over. You can do maybe a second shot here and then a third shot here. And so it just makes a wider shot. Then you can, of course, stitch it together in your favorite raw editor, or you can stitch it together in Photoshop, whatever you prefer to use. Uh, and then you also have your tilt. So when you undo this guy right here, the lens can move up and down, which is really cool. And depending on how you have it uh, on a tripod, uh, you can have it in a horizontal or a vertical orientation. Uh, it will uh, make some really cool uh, depth of field anomalies occur. Uh, you can do some artsier shots like that. So in addition to having your uh, panning uh, horizontally or vertically, uh, you can also take those bendy lines and straighten them out a bit. And that's what this does. It's just like having a tilt shift lens at this point. You just put the adapter on and now you have a tilt shift adapter uh, for your Hasselblad to GFX setup. So who is this for? Uh, obviously uh, shooting panoramas, uh, landscape photographers. If you shoot architecture, 
uh, you want straighter lines, that's what you would get with this. That's the specialty on it. Uh, so uh, that's what I love about it. The pros on it is, I mean, tilt shift lenses, uh, when you go out and buy tilt shift lenses for uh, cameras, they tend to be very expensive. A Fuji doesn't even make tilt shift lenses for the GFX system right now. So you can take these really beautiful, uh, it's, it's sagging because I don't have it tight. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, you can take these very beautiful lenses uh, and you can make them tilt shift. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, something that you can't get right now for GFX uh, natively, and, uh, but it gives you the ability to start doing that right now. So this lens has a lot of really cool advantages to it. Uh, if you do shoot landscapes, uh, you do shoot some architecture. But the only thing that I'm not a fan of is that some of these Hasselblad lenses, like, so this is the 150, it's super front heavy, and so is the 50 millimeter, the one that I have. And so if this isn't tight, uh, and it's not like all the way tight, it can start sagging. And uh, you may not want it to sag, so you just gotta double check that it's super tight right here. But that's really it as far as things that might be able to be improved upon, and it's really more the physics of the lenses. I mean, this does get pretty tight. You just have to tighten it a little more than you normally would. So now that I've had about a month with all three of these adapters, what are my final thoughts? Well. I decided early on that I was gonna try out all three adapters, but I probably was only going to keep one of them. And the reason being is because I use the Hasselblad on my GFX on special occasions. It's a very uh, specialist type situation, and I can't justify having three different adapters for a lens that I'm not using more than like five to 10% of the time. So I decided I was gonna go ahead and just get one of these adapters. Uh, however, one of the great things about testing out adapters is because if you had asked me a month ago, Kevin, which adapter are you going to go with? I would have chosen the standard adapter. And the reason why is I felt that the, um, the variable ND and the tilt shift rocker were just a little too niche for me. But after using them for a month, I've actually changed my mind and I'm going to go with the tilt rocker. And here is why. The tilt rocker and the standard lens, uh, they can both do the same things in terms of just attaching a lens, it being the right distance from your sensor, and you taking a picture and it looking good. They both can do that. The difference, of course, is that the tilt rocker has the tilt shift capabilities. So in that, it is a better choice for me as far as being creative than the standard. I did decide that I wanted this to be something that would help me with my creativity, and the tilt rocker achieves just that. Now you may be asking me about the ND throttle. I was out on the ND throttle kind of early, and the reason why is because the place where an ND throttle would help me the most with portraiture is in super bright situations. Uh, it could darken the, the light a little bit, but the maximum shutter speed on my Fuji GFX can get plenty fast to where I can still shoot wide open anyway. So that wasn't really a selling point. If I were a landscape photographer, however, and I wanted to do super long exposures, you definitely justify this. And since nobody really purchases a GFX for the video capabilities, despite the fact that they are surprisingly good, uh, this really isn't good for me there as well because I shoot my video on Canon. So I hope that provided a little bit of insight as to why I decided to go with the tilt rocker moving forward for my Hasselblad uh, to GFX setup. I wanna extend a special thanks to Photo Deox. They were incredibly helpful throughout this entire process. If it weren't for them letting me test out these three adapters, I'm not sure if I would have purchased any of them, to be quite honest. And hopefully I provide a little bit of insight for you, the viewer, into possibly purchasing one of these for yourself. If you found this to be useful, tell me about it in the comments below. If you found it to be helpful, tell me about it in the comments below. Do you have a Hasselblad V-mount lens that you're using with your GFX? How are you liking it? Are you using the Photo Deox adapters? Tell me about that in the comments below. And if you like this channel, please, I humbly ask you, click the subscribe button below and don't forget about my F11 podcast if you wanna take these conversations further. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.